Greetings everyone and welcome back to my channel A4L. My name is Lance and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite, 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 favorite topics ever which is ancestors um, and specifically ancestor altar work and ancestor veneration. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for a very, very long time but I've been moving around and traveling like crazy. I was in a different city yesterday. I'm in a different city today. I'll be in a different city tomorrow. Um, and there's just a, a lot of movement going on with me right now. So I know that if I don't get this video in now, who knows how long it'll actually take me. So I'm trying to take advantage of this time. I do have some notes. There's a lot of stuff to cover within the realm of ancestral veneration. So this isn't going to be everything and if you do have any questions definitely let me know um, but this information that i'm going to give you in this video will be the basics to get you started and i want to go over five things so first and foremost who are your ancestors and why should you venerate them secondly getting into creating the altar third the maintenance of that altar fourth some etiquette ugh, etiquette, etiquette around um you know, interacting with the altar and your ancestors, as well as five, some alternatives for people who might watch this video and be like, okay, ancestor altar work, maybe it's just not, you know, it's not really for me or it's not really for me right, right now or it's too much of a responsibility, but I'm still interested in um, venerating and honoring my ancestors and working with them in some way. I'm gonna touch on that too. Um, and again, there there is so much that could be said on this topic, but, I want to keep it just concise and to the point. So first and foremost, who are your ancestors and why should you venerate them? So your ancestors are everyone that is connected to you by blood <coughs> that transitioned before you. So this is, you know, parents, grandparents, um, of course, you know, your great grandparents on and on and on and on, aunties and uncles and you know your ancestors are actually broad and um, encompass a lot of people and go back a lot further than what you may even really realize so also i want to say too in context of ancestor altar work um, let's say if you were adopted or maybe your your parents or your family wasn't the best to you but you had a different figure in your life who took you in and kind of mentored you you can also venerate them your adoptive parents or you know that figure you can venerate them as well on your altar i wanted to mention that real quick so why do we care why are we acknowledging people who lived centuries ago um we've never met them don't know them etc well First and foremost, your ancestors definitely know you and they are also waiting for you to acknowledge them and to develop that relationship with them. So on a kind of material level, the reason why you want to honor your ancestors is because first and foremost, they came before you, therefore they paved the way for the opportunities that you have today, the life that you're living today, and you know they've contributed to your life in ways that you may not even be consciously aware of and so for that you want to acknowledge them so that one you can tap into all of the abundance that you're entitled to but also you can pass that baton on to the next generation so that they can do the same <clears throat> as well now on a more spiritual level your ancestors have wisdom and knowledge and they have this because they lived the, the human experience already and they, they lived it before you so by developing that relationship with your ancestors you can turn their wisdom into a guidance for you and for your life and for your goals and for you know for everything that you're trying to manifest the life that you're trying to manifest and so the thing about your ancestors is that they're more elevated than you in terms of the spiritual realm and spiritual elevation. We're humans on earth. The ancestors, they're more elevated. Therefore, when you're higher up, you can see things from that aerial view that we wouldn't be able to see necessarily here down on earth or be as cognizant of. 
So your ancestors are really important. Because of that elevation, they can see things that you may not be aware of and they can guide you. They can give you that guidance and that protection. You might wanna go left, but the ancestors are like, no, you need to go right. This is the right way. And this is what working with them will do for you. So all in all, your ancestors, your ancestors provide you with guidance, protection, and blessings. And working with them can really get the wheels turning for your life a lot faster. I promise you that. Um, and so your altar is the space where you will develop that spiritual intuition as well as your relationship with your ancestors. So now on to creating the actual altar itself. Um, I want to keep this just very simple and affordable for you all. So I will link in the description all of the items that I'm speaking of. These are items that I use myself. My hair is pulled up. It looks like a cone. Uh, that I use myself on uh, my, my actual altar. So to start, you're going to want a small table. And this is something that I did not put in the notes. So I want to tap onto it before I forget. Location. So this can kind of be a, a space of debate for some people. Um, but you want to have, first and foremost, your altar in a location that is safe. That's going to be free of curious hands, touching things, and also judgmental eyes, too. You want it to be in a safe space that is accessible for you that you can come to and, you know, do your work. Now, some people, or I'll even honestly say a lot of people will say, don't keep your altar in your bedroom. Have it in a separate room. And that is a valid suggestion for reasons that I won't get into just to keep the video simple. But if you have to put the altar in your room, that is okay. And we'll get into that a little bit later in this video. But on, but on to creating the actual altar itself. So you want a small table, which I'll link in the description, one that's a perfect size and easy to assemble and also affordable. So you want that small table. You'll want a white cloth to go on top of the table. You want nine glasses of water, cool or cold water in a semicircle. And you can also, I've seen people do seven. I've seen people do three. I've seen people do one glass or one big glass. Um, but I recommend the number nine. Nine is the number of Oya. She's the Arisha that governs the ancestors in their transition. Um, but that's another topic. Ultimately, trust your intuition. Um, and feel free to pick up and put down information in this video that resonates with you But I can definitely assure you that everything that I'm telling you it is the basics to get you started And to get you on the right path at that. So with your semicircle You want to have an assortment of some fruits in the center of it as an offer and To keep it simple. I would recommend one apple one orange and one banana unless you have another assortment in mind that uh, You just feel more connected to but that's an easy one um, That I found is also easy to maintain too You also want to have a white candle as well as pictures of your ancestors if you can and flowers from time to time or always um, If you're able to maintain that is also a great touch from there, you're gonna to wanna to add culturally relevant items to your altar. So, for example, and, and the reason you wanna do that to add those culturally relevant items is just to really further connect to your ancestors. But in addition to culturally relevant items, you wanna have um, items that are specific to certain people um, or just in, in things in general that you know that your family liked as well as personal items if you have them. So for example, for me, I'm a black American, right? Black American, African American. And so I keep a cross in a small Bible on my altar because my ancestors were Christians. Um, and I will routinely offer them things like black eyed peas, fried chicken, um, cornbread, etc. you know, soul food. Um, I'll also keep a shot of Henny. Um, I'll keep a shot of wine sometimes. I, I use a specific brand that I know is favored, um, as well as rum. And that's another thing too, if you can get specific brands that you know that people liked, even better. Um, then I'll also keep certain snacks as well, like popcorn and chocolate and um, apricot 
jam, things that I know that my people liked. And I also keep things like cigarettes and tobaccos on my, not tobaccos, tobacco on my altar. Again, things that I know that my people liked. Um, and I also get down to the brands as well as I, if I can. And then you also want personal things on there as well. So like for example, my grandfather recently passed. I keep his driver's license on my altar. Um, I also keep my great grandmother's bus pass with her picture and name on it, et cetera, et cetera. So just those things to really connect with your altar and your ancestors. And those are gonna be some of the basics for really creating it. You don't have to be too elaborate or fancy. You, you really don't. I would actually encourage that you, you just keep it simple clean and keep your intentions good and pure so that is the setting up of the altar so now let's get into some maintenance interacting with your altar as well as some alternatives if you feel that ancestor altar work is not for you but you want to work with your ancestors so in terms of maintenance keeping it very simple you're going to want to clean your altar and restock your offerings at least once a week easy right um so pretty straightforward uh clean the glasses and refill them with cool water even better if you can get moon water i can do a separate video on what that is and how you capture it um you know restock the fruits um if you're leaving hot food offerings i usually leave those on like for two days max you don't want stuff to get um stale or crusty um and yeah, just be restocking things on at least a weekly basis, keeping it nice, crispy, clean. Wash the cloth too, and you'll be good to go. So now, interacting with your altar and your ancestors. So this is what I personally recommend. Um, this is what I do with my sessions. So you wanna, again, keep that cultural relevance in mind in terms of your ancestry and also some of those specific things that your, your people liked. So for me, what I'll do is I'll burn the frankincense, frankincense and scent, but you can also burn something that's on that same level of frankincense, like Palo Santo, um, or you can just burn some straight sage, anything like that, some type of smell that's gonna invite those benevolent ancestors, because that is something that you wanna focus on is inviting the benevolent ancestors. And we'll get into that, or that might need to be a, a separate video, because I know some people ask, well, what about the bad ones? And that's very valid so i like to burn frankincense and i'll clean myself with some florida water um and with that that's usually forehead back of my neck and then i dab my body with it as well um want to make sure that you're you're clean and that you're presentable um you don't have to be like tip top face full of makeup hair done to speak to your ancestors but you know if you can have a nice shower before you definitely don't want to greet them when you've just had sex or you just masturbated anything that's like what's the word I any of that type of energy you know what i'm trying to say you want to come to them nice clean fresh um damn it was something else that came to mind and it went but yeah you you want to be presentable when you come and speak to them just as you would if they were alive um and then what i also like to do is i like to play gospel music i try to focus on specific songs that i know that my grandmother or my grandfather would have liked because that's just going to strengthen the relationship even more and of course gospel music is also um, of cultural relevance to me as a black american in addition i'll also play music sometimes such as zedeco i don't know if you know what zedeco is but it's cajun creole music um my, my people are from louisiana so that's a part of acknowledging that i'll sometimes play indigenous flute music i am of indigenous heritage as well um, and I do have some like European folk music, but I actually have never played it before. Um, but that is another note. In terms of doing ancestor altar work, you do want to acknowledge and incorporate all of your ancestry as best as you can. You don't want to ignore or leave anyone out. So I'll do all of that to set the mood. I sit at my altar. I like to give a little knock. Rewind, I like the candle first, the white candle. I like to give a little knock to kind of open that spiritual door and say, hey, I'm here, I'm ready. Um, and I always like to first and foremost, and this is what I recommend, start off with a prayer to your ancestors, pray for them, pray for their elevation, and just express your gratitude for them. Um, 
and then welcome forth the benevolent ancestors. Definitely want to specify that when you open it up, you're welcoming your benevolent ancestors, those that those that are both known and unknown. Sometimes my mind is working so quick and I'm trying to say things, I stutter. But welcome forth your benevolent ancestors. That's very important. And um really just sit down and have a conversation with them. I like to read Bible scriptures to mine. Um, let them know what you're going through. Let them know what you need, any questions that you have. And your ancestors will communicate with you either through the water that's on the altar itself. There are signs that you can receive that way. Um, even in the ways that the candles burn through your dreams or any other types of signs that you may get in, in life as you converse with them or if you're like me a big thing and i don't really tell people tell a lot of people this you might be very clear sentient and so that means that you just come into a certain knowing of things without any real how do i say this without any real material reason for why you know this it just comes to you and it's like oh, okay that's the ancestors. You'll, you'll kind of have those moments of revelation as well. And so that's really what you want to do. Just sit, hang out with them, spend time with them, talk to them, and develop that relationship. And of course, always keep it respectful. Um, a big thing too that I want to mention is boundaries. Because one thing that happened with me, and um, I have my altar in my room because I don't have the, the privilege of being able to put it in a separate room. And... Um, Quick side note on that too, if you, again, if you are an African American like myself, you understand the history. So our ancestors had to be resilient, they had to be flexible. So again, if you have to put it in your room, you have to put it in your room, you know, do what you have to do. Your ancestors will be happy um, that you're venerating them. But um, I had mine in my room and when I first started doing the work, I would wake up every single day, and this is for several days, at 4.30 in the morning. and it got very irritating and very frustrating because I couldn't sleep. It didn't matter how late or how early I went to bed. I kept waking up at 4.30. And I remember one night I just popped up. I was irritated. I sat down at the altar, um, frustrated but still respectful. And I said, hey, stop. Stop waking me up at 4.30 in the morning um, because I can't sleep. And if I don't get proper sleep, I can't do the work that's needed to help elevate you guys and then in terms elevate the lineage. So don't be afraid to set those boundaries and speak to your ancestors um, about how you want to be communicated and about what um, makes you feel affirmed and what doesn't. Because that was awful. I, hate, I hated being woken up. Um, and so yeah, so that's going to be your general etiquette in terms of interacting with them. If your altar is in your room as well, of course you definitely don't want to be having sex in front of it, no masturbating in front of it no changing in front of it being butt naked in front of it i feel like this is all like intuitive stuff but if it isn't again you just want to be as respectful as possible in front of your um, altar and if you can as well if you have it in your room if there's a way that you can um partition it off maybe with a curtain or a sheet or something definitely do that as well um in terms of how long you should spend with your altar and when um, you definitely have want to have one day out of the week where you really do sit and um, spend time with them at length. I would say 15 minutes. Um, for me, what I like to do is I try to check in with mine on a daily basis as much as possible with like a nice little five minute conversation. And then one day a week on Monday, and I would recommend Monday or Sunday if you're going to just do a one day sit down with them. Um, on Mondays, I sit down with them. I bring them coffee for 15 minutes and we converse. So that is what you wanna do in terms of interacting with it. Um, I actually didn't have that many notes, so I hope when I watch this back, I got everything that I wanted to hit. So now on to alternatives. So I do wanna emphasize that this is called ancestor altar work for a reason. It is work. It is something that you have to be consistent with and if you're not going to be consistent with it or if you're not going to be able to be consistent with it i would recommend don't do this work and I have some alternatives for you the reason being is it's a relationship right you're developing a relationship with your ancestors you're setting certain expectations um, with them and when you're not meeting them 
that can be disappointing to them on the other side and then you can be bringing about more stagnation into your life because you're not being consistent with the work and it's not that your ancestors are um waiting to they want to punish you or anything like that but you know it, it's called ancestor altar work for a reason um you don't have to be perfect but you definitely want to establish consistency and rapport with your ancestors um, and I've experienced that myself with not being consistent and just seeing that difference in my life Because um, it does make a difference. So some alternatives you can instead of having a whole altar First and foremost the big thing that you can do is just take care of business and take care of yourself Do what you need to do in life and do what you you know, you know, you need to do so um, You know eating well getting enough sleep just handling your responsibilities taking care of your children just whatever it is you you know you you know we'd be knowing what we need to do to have it together do those things your ancestors will greatly appreciate it because when you elevate yourself you are in turn elevating the lineage that came before you and that may potentially come after you so just taking care of yourself is a big way to venerate and give honor to your ancestors you can also cook certain um meals that you know that they enjoyed or cultural meals you can play and sing certain songs in honor of them you can wake up in the morning and just pray to them that's something that i do as well wake up and just say hey i, I give thanks to my ancestors today um and just different things like that to honor and venerate them um so yeah this video is getting over 20 minutes i really wanted to keep it short and succinct there are so so many different things that i could also talk about in addition to this this is just really the basics um i hope that it helped um if it didn't damn but <laughs> definitely leave any comments uh questions that you may have like comment and subscribe i appreciate you and i look forward to seeing you at the next video bye <laughs>